uh, you know, I had to finish uh, the grace message first. We spent three weeks on that. Um, and this has been on my heart now, like I said, for several weeks, uh, more than just a couple of weeks. It's been several weeks. Uh, it's a message I first preached about 20 years ago. And ever since then, I've preached this uh, probably another two more times. So some of you who have been here for that long, you may have heard it before. But I don't know why, but God said you need to preach it again. And uh, it really is because of the condition of the times that we live in and the days that we are living in. Because, you know, I went through my notes. Um, like I said, I preached this 20 years ago, and I went through some of my notes. And back then, there was no Facebook and so there were things that I said, you know, in my message, and now I'm looking forward 20 years ahead. Now we have Facebook, now we have uh, a full-blown internet, Wi-Fi, everybody has all that. Uh, so the conditions of the world, especially with our political uh, system and everything going on around the world, has gotten now where now this sermon is really true. It, it has more relevance now than it did 20 years ago. And even since the past years that I have uh, preached it. Um, there's a gentleman in the Bible that to me is my, he's my most favorite character, and I think not he's not, not the most misunderstood, but probably the one that nobody really pays attention to. And um, when I first studied him, um, found a lot of neat things about him and how he points to the church and the rapture of the church. And it's interesting how this gentleman, this gentleman who lived almost 6,000 years ago and is only written about three times in the Bible, has so much relevance to us today. And so that's when I first studied him and preached this message, and I've since added more and more, and as we go by, and then again now today in 2019, this gentleman has so much relevance to us today and the life that we live and how we live it and the conditions of the world. And his name is Enoch. Um, Enoch lived a it, during a time when the conditions of the world were such where God had to send a flood and destroy everybody. When the conditions of the world were so bad that God just got fed up and said, okay, that's enough. You know, we got to put an end to this. But Enoch's life shows us how we are supposed to live and shows us something about the rapture of the church when Jesus comes back and takes us out. And now we're in 2019, you know, like I said, I preached this 20 years ago, probably in 1999, it was the first time I preached this. 20 years later now, Jesus is coming back even more today than he was then. And one of the things that I'm hearing a lot from other pastors around the country is they're starting to talk about the rapture more and more, about Jesus' return more and more and more. More so where, you know, when we did this, you know, Frank and I used to talk and Mark and I used to talk about the rapture years ago when Hal Lindsey had his book in the 70s, you know, I'm, I wasn't back then, but in the 80s and 90s that now this thing is in the forefront. The truth is Jesus is coming back, whether you believe it or not. You can't stop him from coming back. He is coming back for his church. And the, one of the things that he keeps saying that I keep hearing in, inside my heart is make sure the people are ready because it will happen as a thief in the night like that. Here today, gone tomorrow. The message is not to scare you. The message is to encourage you to live right, to be ready, to do kingdom business, as James always says, to make sure you share the gospel at all times not with your mouth, but also with what you do. Because he is coming back. Everything that's in, I, I mean, I, I know I've made this illustration before, but if you go to the book of Revelation, chap, starting about chapter 4, that everything in this book has already occurred, and it occurred when it was supposed to and how it was supposed to, and that's all we have left. <laughs> so all this has happened. It's truth. It's, this is not just a, a book about Jesus, but it's also historical. Everything here historically has happened, factual. So all the atheists and, you know, anybody who doesn't believe in Christ can't argue this away. So if you can't argue this away, I'm pretty sure that this will happen. You've got maybe 99% has been done. 1% needs to happen. Thank you for your amens. So let's look at uh, Genesis chapter 4 real quick. Let's start there. Everybody good so far? All right, Genesis chapter 4. I know Martha is like, I heard this already. I'm ready for the rapture. <laughs> 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 
All right, Genesis chapter 4, verse 16. This is talking about the line of Cain. And if you know, Cain is the one who, he was the f- person who committed the first murder, correct? He killed his brother Abel. So uh, chapter, verse 16, chapter 4 in Genesis, then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. I want you to catch that. He went out from the presence of the Lord. Do you notice he left God? He walked away from God. He says, and, and bore Enoch, and he built the city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. To Enoch was born Irad, and Irad begot Me- Mehujael, and Mehujael begot Methushael, and Methushael begot Lamech. Then Lamech took for him two wives. The name of one was Ada, and the name of the other was Godzilla. Just a joke. <laughs> it's Zilla, not Godzilla, but I'm sure she looked like Godzilla. Anyway. But I want you to notice what's happening. Notice after Cain, he starts to have kids, and the world starts to regress. The conditions of the world start going downhill. Notice this guy now marries two women. See that? First of all, Cain leaves the presence of God. Then his son, he has a son who builds a city, names it after himself. Notice man now starting to lift themselves up, naming things after themselves. We're going to conquer. We're going to take over. This is our world. We'll do it the way we want. Then this dude takes two wives. Now watch what he does. And Ada bore Jabal, and he was the father of those who dwell in tents and have livestock. His brother's name was Jabal, and he's the father of all those who uh, play the harp and the flute. Notice certain gifts and talents that are now entering into certain families. And as for Zillah, she also bore Tubal-Cain, an instructor of every craftsman in bronze and iron, and the sister of Tubal-Cain was Nama. Then Lamech said to his wives, catch what he's now saying, and uh, Ada, uh, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice. Wives of Lamech, listen to my speech, for I have killed a man for wounding me, even a young man for hurting me. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, then Lamech seventy-sevenfold. Now, we know that when, when uh, uh, Cain killed Abel, that Cain was afraid that he was going to now be killed. And so what God did is he put a mark on him and says that no one kill Cain. If anybody does, his, his, he will be avenged sevenfold. And so what Lamech does is, well, if this guy can kill his brother, then I can kill anybody I want, even a young man, just for looking at me the wrong way, just for cutting me, but I will be avenged seventy-sevenfold. See the justification of murder. Well, I can kill who I want, but if anybody touches me, they're going to have to pay 77 times. Does it sound like today the justification of babies or or anybody that you want? We're justified in doing this. this. The condition of this world here is exactly what's going on now, but it's worse. Where man now makes the decisions. We'll make the rules. We decide who lives or dies, and it's not murder. Verse 25, it says, And Adam knew his wife, and again she bore a son named Seth, for God has appointed another seed for me instead of Abel, whom Cain killed. And as for Seth, to him also was was born, and he named, a son was born, he was named Enosh. Then men began to call on the name of the Lord. Pretty interesting. The conditions of the world during Cain, uh, during um, Cain and and the and Seth now are in opposition to each other. So let me say this. So you have Cain's line, correct? And now you have a new guy named Seth, right? Abel's dead. So Cain is the firstborn of Adam and Eve. Abel was the second. He's dead. And now they have a son named Seth. So now you have two lines on the earth. You have Cain, who is the father of all the ungodly, who are doing things and murdering and making up their own laws. And then you have this guy named Seth, and I want you to notice what it says about Seth in verse 26. And as for Seth, to him was also born a son named Enosh. Then, watch this, men began to call on the name of the Lord. So we see a Seth as the godly line and Cain as the ungodly line. Everybody see that? Now, whether you know it or not, there are not, you know, uh, blacks, whites, Asians, you know, uh, 
yellow, whatever color you skin you are, that is not how God looks at you. God looks at you whether you're in Christ or not. There are only two races on this planet, the godly and the ungodly. That's how God sees it. Listen, the reason why we're different colors is because God is full of color, and he had to express himself. God is not white or black or yellow or, or tan or anything. He's full of color. He's every color. And so he just poured it out when he breathed into man. And unfortunately, we go by what we see, but not what, what God sees. God looks at the heart. So the, way, so the world that you have to look at things as there's either people who are on first Adam or the second Adam. Whether you're a Christian or you're not. Now, I'm not trying to pick on other religions, but God sees it that way. He's, he's either your father, or as Jesus said, the devil's your father. Listen, one group is going to heaven, the other group is going to hell. I know this is not an easy message, but I, the truth needs to be told sometimes. I don't like to sugarcoat things. Listen, sin is sin, it's not a mistake. Now, notice the condition here, though. We have a problem here. Cain has about a three or four generation head start on Seth. In other words, the ungodly are starting to take over the earth. They're starting to create governments. They're starting to create crafts and, and mus musicians, you know, musical companies. Or, you know, as you can see all the different things they're doing here. They're creating systems, societies. And then later on, Seth is born. And when Seth is born, it causes a problem, an eruption in the planet. Because where you had ungodly men who are killing people and justifying murder, now you have a man who shows up and begins to call on the name of the Lord. That rubs them the wrong way. Now, according to the timeline, Seth was born about 100 years after Cain was born. So they have a hundred year head start to take over, to pollute the minds of the people on the planet. But now one man shows up who begins to call on the name of the Lord. And he starts to preach Christ. Tell me that's not a problem to the world system today. When you say, well, you can't kill a baby that's born. Why? Because that's murder. Well, who said? We can say what we want to say. We make the laws. No, he makes the laws. So the moment you speak up and declare something that Jesus said, you now become a, 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 um, a, a, a parasite. You become a problem in the world. You become persecuted. And then what we as Christians do, we're like, all oh, right, you know, I don't want to cause any problems. You know, I don't, you know, I want, to, I want to stay your friend. I don't want to. Let me back up a little bit. If we don't preach the truth, who will? The Bible says this, that Noah in 2 Peter was a preacher of righteousness. So now you have all these ungodly men who have a hundred-year head start and are polluting the world, and then a preacher of righteousness shows up. Then another preacher, his son, then his son shows up, and they all begin to start preaching Christ. Guess what the world wants to do? We need to get rid of these people. They're just messing up our game. They're making life miserable for us. We can't do what we want to do. We can't live the way we want to live because Christians keep saying these things. It's my choice. Amen. Look at Genesis 4.1 real quick. We know the story with Cain, and Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, and have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, that this time was Abel, and so on. Go down to verse um, 7, uh, oh, 6. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry, and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, 
and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. I want you to, I want you to know this. This is just a little plug. Anytime you're about to sin, I can guarantee you God will show up and have a talk with you and try to convince you not to do it. That's the Holy Spirit's role, to kind of rub you the wrong way. You sure you want to do that? That's not a good thing. Nope, that's, that ain't going to work. Let me tell you about the consequences. And he says, don't do it, Cain. You rule over it. But Cain gave in to it. And then it started the ungodly line, one after another, after another, after another. Now, <clears throat> let's continue. Genesis chapter 5. Verse 6, um, verse 5, so all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. Seth lived 155 years and begot Enosh. At 155 years old, he had his first kid. <laughs> Remember back then people lived 900 years. So you didn't get out of puberty till you were like 70 or 80. You understand? That's why. And at this actually longevity will be reestablished during the millennium. So at 100 years old, you just came out, you were just now 20 years old, basically. It's like dog years, right? Six years, seven, anyway. So watch this. Verse 7. So after he begot Enosh, Seth lived 807 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Seth were 912 years and he died. Enosh lived 99 years and begot Canaan. 90 years, sorry. After he begot Canaan, Enosh lived 815 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enosh were 905 years and he died. We're talking about the godly line, right? All of these guys are preachers. Canaan lived 70 years and begot Mahalalel. And he begot Mahalalel. Canaan lived, Canaan lived 800 years and 40 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Canaan were 910 years, and he died. Mahalalel lived 65 years and died, and Jared, I don't want to have John or Brian or Artie or James. He's got to have these la 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 names just to mess with us. <laughs> Verse 17, so all the days of Mahalalel were 895 years, and he died. Jared lived 162 years and begot Enoch, underline this guy. This guy has so much relevance to your life today. He speaks to us after almost 5,000 years, almost 6,000 years, this man speaks to us right now. And after he begot Enoch, Jared lived 800, and, uh, 800 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Jared were 962 years and he died. Now, watch Enoch. Ready? Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch, you would think he would say, lived blah, 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 a so-and-so years, right? Right? Because that's what he did. Seth had this guy at 90 years old and lived blah, 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 right? He, the next guy, Enoch, you know, had, at 90 years old, had this, and then lived, blah, 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 blah. Notice what it says about Enoch. The story changes. He says, Enoch lived, six, lived 65 years and begot Methuselah, and he begot Methuselah, after he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. There was something different about this guy. First of all, let me point this out. When Cain had his kids, if you read Cain's lineage, it said Cain begot this guy, then he begot this guy, and he begot this guy, and he begot this guy. When Seth had kids, it says Seth begot this guy and then lived 800 years. Then Enosh uh, begot this guy and then lived so and so years. Then Jared had this guy and lived. Notice the godly line lives. When you have God, you have life. He didn't say that about the Cain lineage. He only says that about Seth's lineage. Seth had a baby and then lived. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And when you have him, you live. Watch. Ready? So Enoch lived 65 years and he begot Methuselah. 
And after he begot Methuselah, Cain, uh, Enoch walked with God for 300 years. Let me, say, let me point this out. Enoch was the seventh generation from Adam. You know God's into numbers, right? Seven days, seven sayings on the cross, seven churches in Revelation, right? And give you a whole bunch of sevens. God does things with numbers. There's a reason why he's the seventh generation from Adam. Let me point out some, some statistics here that I wrote down. Ready? Adam was 622 years when Enoch was born. Think about that. So Adam lived 900 and how many years? Anybody know? 39 years, right? Adam lived 939 years. So when Adam was 622 years old, Enoch was born. He's the seventh generation. Magic number. Adam lived for 308 years of Enoch's life. Enoch lived 365 years. Watch this. Verse 22, and after he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years, and he had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Wait, wait, why did he live so short? How come everybody else is living 900 years, and Enoch only lived 365? Did he do something to sin? Did he do something to check out? Well, 24 says, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. He is here today, gone tomorrow. Enoch, there are two people who never died in the Bible. Elijah and Enoch. Enoch never died. He walked right into heaven. Let me say this. He walked so close to God that one day he looked and he was in heaven. Never saw death. Let me ask you something. How many of you struggle to walk with God from Sunday to Sunday? Some can't even, uh, Monday, Pastor. <laughs> what a great sermon, but man, can you pray for me? <laughs> you know, you, you, you preached on love yesterday, and well, I'm having a real trouble with that right now. You know, my, my mother-in-law just called, and man, she's just on my nerves. How can this guy walk with God for 300 years and never get a blip? He, he walked with him. Now, it's not saying that he didn't know God before because this is the godly line. What it's saying is something changed in him, that he walked with God for 300 years. There was something happened to him that caused him to change his walk. Well, now, if so, you know, I won't go to church, you know, and I'm just using church as an example, right? I'm not going to go to church once, once a month. I'm going to church every week. Actually, pastor, can you open a church Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Because I'm going to go to church every single day. I want to seek God. I want to be on my face before God. I'm going to read every single word that's in this Bible. I'm going to keep singing and praising and praying, and I'm going to do everything because I want to walk with God. And he did that for 300 years. Why? Let me say this. What allowed him to do that for 300 years is he had a one-on-one -on -one pure relationship with Jesus. Now, I want you to think about this. Here's Enoch, right? Adam is 622 years old when Enoch is born. Adam gets a little older. He's about 60-something years old, right? He's about to have a kid. He has, actually, he has a kid. Let me just fast forward 65 years. He has a kid named Methuselah. And think about what it's like to have your great, 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 great granddad around. But think about what it's like to have Adam as your great, 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 great granddad. I wish my grandfather was still alive. I loved my grandfather. My, on my mother's side, I didn't know my, my, my dad's side too much because he was in Greece. But my, my, my mom's side, we spent so much time together. We, every time I'd, my, my mom and dad would dump us there on the weekends, we'd have to spend a whole weekend there. 
So every, because they were always going out. My mom got married at 15. She had me at eight, 17, 18. So they were still young, so they always went out. <laughs> they had to catch up. So me and my brother would get dumped at my grandparents, but we, I loved them. And every Saturday morning, you know, my, my grandmother would make us eggs and toast, and my grandfather would take us to the park every single Saturday. And on the way home, he'd buy me a 7-Up and a slice of pizza <laughs> every single week. You know, New York pizza, big, but back then, for less than a dollar, I could have a 7-Up and a pizza. I would love to sit and talk to my grandfather and my grandmother. We'd sit on a stoop on a front porch, and we'd, just, and we'd talk. We talk all night, just about stuff. Think about Enoch. He has access to the first man. Hey, Adam. Hey, great, great, great granddad. What was it like to walk with God? What was it like in the garden when everything was beautiful? What was it like to see God? What was it like to glow? What was it like to have God's glory? Hey, great granddad, what was the world like before you sinned? <laughs> hey, great granddad, why did you do this to us? Was it worth the bite of an apple? Hey, great granddad, what was it like when you saw your firstborn kill your secondborn? Hey, great, great, great granddad, how do you feel with all the sickness and disease running around that you were responsible for? It's amazing how sin can penetrate years and years and years and years. But think about having access to the man who started it all. Listen, we're grateful for God's grace. If anything we've done, His grace is there to help. Amen? Listen, if you think I'm being tough, before the foundation of the world, God already saw Adam messing up, and he had Jesus waiting in the wings. So don't... God already had a plan. Amen? But wouldn't it be nice to ask Adam, hey, Adam, what was it like to glow, to float? I mean, to, just to see God. Why did you listen to your wife? No. <laughs> Amen. Ready? Noah never knew Enoch. By the time Noah was born, Adam and, no and no uh, Enoch were gone. But it's interesting that Noah knew God. Ready? Let me say this. After you have a whole godly line of preachers preaching Christ, preaching Christ, preaching Christ, by the time Noah shows up, there are only eight people that know God. The whole world is corrupt, and only eight people have heard the message of Christ and gave their lives to God. The whole world, God says, I got to destroy everything and he only found eight that he could save. Sin is such a destroyer. Ready? Verse 21 again. Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So let me stop right there. It seems to me that the birth of Methuselah, his son, had something to do with Enoch walking with God. Doesn't it? L let me read it again. So after he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God. Listen, I know the birth of my kids changed my life, but it didn't cause me to walk with God for 300 years. I love my kids. And every time they were born, I was like, praise the Lord. You know, th I'm thankful for a, for a baby. And it changed, my firstborn changed me because now I'm responsible. <laughs> now I got to pay. <laughs> right? The birth of a baby, right, Ross? It changes your life. It changes your life. But did it cause you to walk with God for 300 years? 
the birth of Methuselah caused Enoch to walk with God for 300 years. How many of you know a name means something? Right? In the Bible, we have names and they mean something. The first one I'll say is Moses, right? You know what, what does Moses mean? Bible scholar? Drawn out of water, right? Because he was, he was sent down the river the Nile, right? And they took him, drawn him, put, pulled him out of the water, and they called him Moses. <laughs> Let my people go. No. Right? They, called, they gave him a name. His name means something. What about when God said, for now on you will not be called Abram, you will be Abraham. His name meant something. What does his name mean? The father of many nations. Right? How about Jesus? His name means something. Savior, right? Salvation is of the Lord. How about Adam? Adam means something. Adam means humankind. That's what Adam means. Well, when we dig in a little deeper, we find out that Methuselah has a meaning. My parents named me Aristotle. They named me after my grandfather my, on my father's side. I found out my name means perfect and excellent and complete. <laughs> can't, you can't top me. <laughs> That's what Aristotle means. Perfect, excellent, and complete. You know, it means something to name your kid, right? P parents, I mean, you know, Jamie and uh, Lauren spent nine months trying to figure out a name for their baby. Because the name means, so once you give a name, it, it'll, the baby will carry it for the rest of their lives. It means something. Well, something happened to Enoch because he called Meth his son, he gave his name Methuselah. Methuselah means when he dies, it shall fall. That's what his name means. When he dies, it shall fall. So can you picture Methuselah going to school? First day of school, uh, where is when he dies it shall fall? <laughs> you know, and then they find him. Hey, hi, that's me. Hi, my name is when I die it shall fall. Well, okay, well, can you still, can you stick around for a while? Because we don't know what is going to fall, but we'll just keep looking up. Hmm. When he dies it shall fall. That's what his name literally means. When he dies it shall fall. Ready? Let's go over to Jude. Chapter 1. Let's go over to Jude chapter 1. Something happened to Enoch that changed his life forever, that caused him to walk with God for 300 years. Jude chapter 1, ready? You there? Verse 14. Jude chapter 1, verse 14. It says, Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them and all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way and all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Let me tell you what, G what Enoch is saying. He prophesied. Remember, he's a preacher of righteousness. Enoch is prophesying about Jesus coming back before Jesus was ever born. Scholars say this, that Enoch has a greater, had a greater revelation of Jesus' return than John did in the book of Revelation. That's what scholars say, that his vision of the end time is greater than anything John ever wrote or Daniel ever wrote. There's another book out there called the Book of Enoch. It, it was taken out of the Bible about 500 years ago. And in the Book of Enoch, Enoch talks about a vision that Jesus showed him. Jesus showed him the end at the very beginning. Jesus showed him the return of Christ. He showed him that all the saints coming back to execute judgment. Enoch saw what the world would look like now, 6,000 years ago. And it says that he prophesied about it. He preached about it. He said, hey, 
Je the Lord is coming back before Jesus was ever born. But his vision, what he saw, was so vivid that it caused him to walk with God for 300 years. We have DVDs, YouTube, internet, books, all about end times, and we can't even walk with God for a week. We have Hollywood make movies about the miracles, the signs, the wonders of Moses, of Jesus' life. We just had, you know, two years ago, you know, what, where's that, that, that couple made that whole series of the Bible. We see it on big screen. We see it on HD. Now we can see it in 4K. And guess what? It does nothing to us to preach the gospel, to live right. But this man saw, and it caused him to change his heart. He says, God, I want to know you. God, I can't live this world without you. What you saw me is so tragic, so terrible, that I, I, I need to be ready. I need to go to heaven. I can't live an ungodly life. Listen, one of the best movies that I've seen about Jesus is The Passion of the Christ. And to see Jesus being, I mean, just torn up, beat up, and ripped up, and nailed, it, it, people cried. 9-11 was a tragic event. It was traumatic for a lot of people. I think your uncle was in the building, right? One of the buildings. He got out by the skin of his teeth. It caused people, the day after 9-11, we were packed. We had people knocking on our door to open the church because they wanted to pray and get right with God. But 9-11, people don't even remember it anymore. People don't even remember things anymore. What, you know, our, some people suffered through. They don't remember tragic events anymore. It was half-baked. It was just for a season. Well, I'll get right. Ah, whew, we made it. Good. Well, let's just go back to our lives. Enoch never went back to his old life. Enoch said, what I saw changed me. But wait, something else happened. Because it doesn't explain the name of his son, Methuselah. Right? Because the son is, when I die, it shall fall. It doesn't explain the name. But so far we see a picture that, that Enoch saw what's about to happen. He saw the conditions of this world, and he saw Jesus coming back and executing judgment on the world. So what does Methuselah have to do with this? Why did he, 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 give, he call his son Methuselah? Well, Methuselah means when I die, it shall fall. Methuselah lived the longest anyone has ever lived. Methuselah lived 969 years. Methuselah died, ready? Seven days before God closed the door on the ark. Methuselah died seven days before God closed the door on the ark. Enoch is dead. Now Methuselah has a great-grandson named Noah. Noah is his grandson, I think, right? I think it's his grandson. Methuselah has a grandson named Noah. Or great-grand. Let me, let me look. Go back to Genesis. Chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5, verse 25. Methuselah lived 187 years and begot Lamech. And Lamech, be, uh, 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 after he begot Lamech, Methuselah lived 782 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Methuselah were 969 years and he died. Lamech lived 182 years and had a son. And he called his name Noah. It's his grandson. So, so God shows up to Noah and says, Noah, the end of mankind is before me. I want you to build an ark, and I want you to take your wife, your sons, and their wives, and lock yourself in the ark, because I'm about to flood the earth. I'm about to pour rain on the earth. 
rain? It's never rained before. It never rained before Noah's flood. Do you know that? It never rained until the flood. It never rained. In other words, water never fell from the sky before Noah. So here's Methuselah. Hey, Noah, what you doing? I'm building an ark. Why? Because God said it shall fall. <gasps> Wait. When I die, it shall fall. That's my name. Now I get it. My purpose in this life is going to be fulfilled. That's why my dad called me, when I die, it shall fall. Because he saw the flood. So not only did Enoch see the end of Jesus coming back, but Enoch saw the flood and he called his son, when he dies, it shall fall. So 969 years, every, so every place no, Methuselah walked, when I die, it shall fall. When I die, it shall fall. And then he shows up, and Noah, his grandson, is building an ark. Right? It took him 120 years to build that ark. Building that ark, building that ark. Hey, Noah, what you doing? You know, people will come up to Noah, neighbors, what are you doing? It's going to rain, it's going to rain. Yeah, right, it's going to rain. Yeah, well, t talk to my granddad. No, Methuselah lived the longest anyone has ever lived. You know why? It's the grace of God. God just said, right, no, he could have lived 800 years, 900 years, 939, but God said, no, I'm going to give you another year. Why? Because the people aren't ready yet. How about another year? No, I'm going to give you another year. I'm going to give you another year. And every single morning, Noah would look up as he's banging away on the, on the thing. Hey, granddad, we got another, we got another day. <laughs> Granddad's still alive. And then one Sunday morning, let's say, where's granddad? What happened to granddad? Uh-oh, granddad must be dead. Run up to granddad's house. Methuselah is dead. Noah sounds the alarm. We got seven days, guys, and it shall fall. And only eight people made it out alive. I want you to notice something here. That before the destruction of mankind, because Enoch should have been alive, but before the, struck, the destruction of mankind with Noah, God took Enoch out. He said, all right, Enoch, I'm going to take you out. I'm going to protect you from what's about to come. Enoch is, uh, is symbolic of us. Before God begins to destroy the world in the seven years of tribulation, he's going to say, okay, church, you're walking with me? Follow me out of this world. Are you going to walk out of this world with Jesus? Will you be one of them? Will you be ready when Jesus comes back? Bow your heads, please.